so to speak. Uh, Representative Matt Gates of the great state of Florida, I believe, can slide in at this point. Would love to talk with him about this. Uh, but in the meantime, just the play-by-play, -play, and there he is. He pops up on the screen. Thank you for joining me. This is coming together in very fast fashion. What just happened? Well, I think that we saw the Speaker of the House uh, reflect the views of the membership of the House, that we would like to see a more robust fight to deliver on the president's agenda for border security. And so I'm glad that colleagues like Jim Jordan and Mark Meadows were over encouraging the president to stay strong and stay tough. In the House, we can pass $5 billion for the wall. I think we should prove it to the press and to the liberals and to the American people, send that border security package back over to the Senate and see if it's the Senate's priority to protect the American people from the threats of illegal immigration and drugs and human trafficking, or whether they just want to keep doing what Washington always does, kick the problem down the road, keep doing things the same way we've always been doing them for, a, for the next few months. I'm tired of that, Harris. This president was sent here to make changes, and I'm proud that even on the eve of Christmas, he's still trying and still fighting, and we ought to have his back. We know that the president has said that he regretted, and I was anchoring that day when it happened. I saw the tweet, and he did his news conference, and the whole thing, I'm going to come out and I'm not signing the omnibus bill. And then he did. And he regretted it almost immediately after because he realized that it is, you know, a greater thing than just the thing you sign. It's the perception of whether or not you're going to fight all the way until the end. And so now is he taking some people with him? I have a couple of questions from my notes. So earlier today, we started with a source in the House GOP conference telling Fox News that they wanted assurances that the president wasn't going to make a stink and wouldn't veto the bill. I mean, that's not where we are now. Well, now the president has given assurances that he will veto the bill. And so conservatives in the House that didn't want to vote for something that the president would then rebuke now have cover from the president. Well, what's up with that? He's indicated that. Everybody well, I think it's a it's a good thing for the president to say that we're going to keep fighting, not a bad thing. No, I'm just wondering, why can't people just vote the way they're going to vote and see what the president does? I don't understand why they wanted to handle him. Well, it's, it's, it's good to have situational awareness as to where the leader of our party is because uh. in my limited experience here, nothing in Washington ever happens without presidential leadership. And so those of us who are allies of the president want to know where he's going to deploy his political capital I so see. that we can effectively prepare the ground for him. And then when all the attacks come about how this is the Trump shutdown, we want to be there to provide a, an adequate context and an adequate defense. Look, this is the question we got to ask ourselves. Do we fundamentally think that we're going to get a better deal from Nancy Pelosi when she's Speaker of the House than we're going to be able to get right now? This is the time to fight. This is our last stand to try to get the president his wall because we won't be able to get it before the re-election without a seven million person amnesty package once Nancy Pelosi is Speaker. You bring her up. She told the president in the White House uh, a couple of weeks ago, it's been now, uh, oh, you don't have the votes to go forward on your five billion for the wall. And then we started seeing some Republican members of the House go home. Can you talk to me about that? And what happens? Do they, do they come back? What, what, what is the plan at this point? Well, it, it, it is hard uh, to always cajole the members who have lost their elections or who are retiring. Yeah, but they're still working for I us, the people. Yeah, they still cash their paychecks, so I think they should probably still be here to cast their votes, uh, even on the eve of their retirement. But look, w I think we have 218 votes for $5 billion for the wall. We have funded, uh, we've had wall funding votes in the past, and we've had no problem. So I think that the Senate is where the problem is. The president's right about that, and mm -hmm. I think we ought to put pressure on the Senate. When our, when our open negotiating position is the white flag of surrender we never get anywhere Ooh. in this town so like we've got to actually fight and send them a bill that they have to vote for or against to fund the wall let's see where they stand so senator cassidy was on with me a few minutes ago and and he agreed with you and thinks he can go forward but you still need those 10 democrats and it's the end of the year and we're up against it again however the paychecks were still in that next pay period until December 28th, John Roberts reported, uh, reported earlier. So do you have enough time to get something done now that Republicans are going back to the drawing board? We have the time. The question is whether we have the will to fight and wow. execute on the president's agenda. Nobody wants to shut down on the eve of Christmas. But, but let's remember, if we don't get this now, Harris, I fear that the wall may be an illusory promise rather than something that we've got the capability to deliver on for the American people. All right. Do you have the will? Again, December 28th being that next point where you would see a change in payroll, mm -hmm. checks coming in. You have time, conceivably, from the Schumer shutdown, because that only happened for a day or so, you've got time to shut it down and move on. Does that happen? 
It could. I think it's very reasonable the president could come out and say, look, we're going to open the government in January one way or the other, but I don't care if every senator and, and congressman has to cancel their Christmas. We're going to stay Ooh. here. We're going to work, and we're going to make sure that we give every effort to delivering on this promise that not only the president made, but that many Republicans made when we were before our voters. And so I think the president could conceivably say, nobody's going home. Everybody's staying to work. We will reopen the government in January. So there's an end game, but until that time, I don't think we've seen our best effort in Congress yet. Sometimes we do our best work when the expectations are lowest, and they're pretty low right now, Harris. You used a word for those Republican House members who've gone home who are now facing, well, I didn't get reelected retirement. You said cajole. Now is it corral? Real quickly. Will they Corral, come back? cajole, convince, whatever we have to do, <laughs> uh, we got to get the votes wow. here to execute on the president's agenda. Well, on this Thursday, we are someplace we never thought we would be with President Trump now uh, sending those House members back to the drawing board. Thank you for being with me for the breaking news. Congressman Matt Gates, of the great state of Florida. Thank you.